Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the different ASAR models that are currently available, including the ASAR Mini, the ASAR Plus, as well as the newest version of the Plus with more storage. Because fairly often I get asked the question, well, which ASAR should I get? And I hope by the end of the video, you'll have a pretty clear idea of which option is gonna work best for you, depending on your budget and the features you're looking for. Now, in fact, this video was originally gonna be a review for the ASAR Mini, which I got back in January. I've been using it over the past few months, it's done a fine job, but I noticed that Astro Blender already did a fantastic video which covers really everything you'd ever want to know about the Mini. Therefore, if you're just interested in learning about the Mini itself, I'd highly recommend you check out Astro Blender's video which will be linked down below. Today we're going to be doing something a bit different, rather than just rehashing what Astro Blender already said, because one of the things I've noticed over the last six months in particular is that a lot of you guys are still using the ASAR Pro, which came out back in around 2020 I think. And for the time, the ASAR Pro did a nice job, but there was always one serious problem, and that is the Wi-Fi range was terrible. Even during my recent workshops in Kanab, we would have people standing, you know, from here to probably the camera, in some cases, with a window in between them. And very often, their phone or iPad would lose connection to the ASAR Pro. This is very frustrating, especially when you consider that this also slows down the transfer speeds of your photos. It just makes everything more difficult. And that's why I wanted to start off today and talk about the Pro and a few different ways you can improve the performance because a lot of you guys are still using it. The first thing you can try is getting an antenna attached to your Pro. This will cost you around $50. You'll have to send it in to a third party where they'll go in and solder on the necessary components and have that antenna attached. After doing some research on the internet, it seems this does do a nice job of increasing the Wi-Fi range. And overall, it seems like a worthwhile investment at $50. Another option is you can always get a Wi-Fi extender. This will plug in to your ASAR Pro with the Ethernet port and it'll plug into a battery. I've actually got one here, so let me show you how this would work. All right, so here's the extender that I have. It's a Netgear something or other. I'll have it listed down below if you want to get it. But basically, what you need to do for this extender is just plug it into an AC wall outlet or in my case, on my battery here. And that's actually one of the first problems I have with this is because this battery in particular, if I attach this, first of all, these antennas are getting in the way. But second of all, you know, it's taking up a lot of space here on the battery. It might get in the way of my USB ports or even the 12 volt port for the mount or whatever else I'm doing. So with that said, it's not necessarily the best idea, but it will drastically increase the Wi-Fi range of your older ASAR Pro. Then what you want to do is find the Ethernet port here on the side and then plug the other end into your ASAR Pro, which you actually have here in my pocket. So there's your Ethernet port right there. You'll just plug it in. Now this already shows you another problem with this method. We've got enough cables going around at night. The last thing we need is a, another Ethernet cable in between our battery and the ASAR. So between the fact that you're losing an AC port on your battery potentially, and you have just another cable, I'm not a huge fan of the Wi-Fi extender option. But if you do decide to go this route, let me show you how it actually works in terms of connecting your phone to the ASAR Pro. Okay, so I've plugged in the Wi-Fi extender. I've turned everything on. Now what I need to do is go to my Wi-Fi settings here on my phone. And you should see a few different options here for the Wi-Fi. See how there's an ASIR network, but there's also an extender 2.4 and an extender 5. Because we've connected the Ethernet cable between the extender and the ASIR, if we connect to one of those extender Wi-Fi networks, we're basically connecting to the ASIR. So what I'm going to do is connect to extender 2.4, and if it asks for a password, it's probably 12345678, just like the ASIR would be. If you want faster speed, you can always connect to the 5 as well. And I'll just do that right now so you can see it. The 5G will give you much faster transfer speeds, which could be helpful if you're trying to shoot at night, of course. Anyway, once we connect to either of the extender Wi-Fi's and it goes through properly, then what we can do is start up the app on our phone and continue on as normal. And when you get this message here, it says Wi-Fi is not connected to the internet. You want to make sure you hit never show again and stay on Wi-Fi. Don't switch to mobile. This will just make sure that from now on it connects to the Wi-Fi and you don't have to worry about it connecting your home Wi-Fi instead. Okay, so now we'll start up the ASAR app on our phone. And with any luck at all, this will go through without a problem. We'll hit enter device. 
And if you're seeing this here on the screen, it says download needed. ASAR needs to download 646 megabytes of additional files. This is a problem I've been having with this particular new phone that I got. And it seems no matter what ASAR I connect it to, I get this prompt right here. And then it gets stuck at the 0% downloading. And this happens on my ASAR Plus, as well as this ASAR Pro apparently. I'm not quite sure what the underlying issue is, but basically this never goes beyond zero and I get stuck here and I can't actually use this phone. This is one of the downsides of using an ASIR because you have software issues that you might have to troubleshoot. And we'll get to this more in a minute, but it's always a good idea, if possible, to have an iPad or a secondary phone around because if one phone is giving you trouble, there's a good chance the other device won't have that problem. Unfortunately, we cannot proceed at this point because it wants to download this resource file and it's just not gonna work. Now in hindsight, I should have brought my backup phone with me, but I don't have it with me. So for now, we'll have to call it right there, but at least you now see how to attach your network extender to the ASAR and some of the problems you might encounter. Now that I've shown you two different ways to increase the performance of your older Pro unit, let's take a look at the ASAR Plus and the ASAR Mini. So here's the original Pro. Here is the Plus with the antenna, which is the big difference. And then we have, of course, the Mini, which is noticeably smaller than even the Plus was. Now, realistically, these are all really lightweight and portable. I don't know why they constantly focus on making them smaller and lighter. I mean, even the original one was plenty portable, but it is still pretty nice that you can fit this right in your pocket if you need to. I'm gonna put the Pro away for right now, then we'll focus on the main differences between the Plus and the Mini. The first thing I need to stress is that there's now two versions of the Plus. There's the original version and the latest one that's coming out, which has 256 gigabytes of additional storage. I don't have the newer version though, so we're just gonna talk about the Plus that I currently have. Now, when you're looking at these, besides the size difference, the only other noticeable exception is that the Plus has an ethernet port and two USB 3.0 ports, whereas the Mini, does not have the ethernet, and it has four USB 2.0 ports. Now that initially had me worried. I said, well, why would they get rid of USB 3.0? It's faster speeds, that's gonna cause problems. But as Astro Blender notes in his review of the Mini, this really doesn't translate to any noticeable performance loss, unless you're doing planetary work, or you're taking a lot of photos quickly, or video. Because most of us, if we're shooting nebular galaxies, we're taking like one photo every two, three, maybe even five minutes. So you're never really gonna notice the slowdown of the USB 2.0 ports. The bigger problem is gonna come if your Wi-Fi signal degrades, because at that point, it's gonna take longer for the photos to transmit from this to your phone or tablet. And that's actually gonna cause you more problems than a USB 2.0 connection ever would. And really my main point here is that the loss of the USB 3.0, you're really never gonna notice it again unless you're doing planetary. The only other change in terms of the design is that the Plus has a power switch. Not really a big deal. This one, as soon as you plug it in your battery and turn the battery on, it's gonna turn on. The only other minor difference is that you have two power outputs on one side, two power outputs on the other side, whereas the Plus has four all on one side. So in terms of the user experience, I think there's really not much of a difference between the Mini and the Plus, which is actually a good thing for the Mini because it performs just as you would expect it to. And the best part is it costs $100 less. So with that said now, let's talk about the pricing because this is obviously gonna factor in your decision. The Mini is currently the cheapest ASIR out there for $200. And I think that's a fair price for what you're getting. The older Plus, which I have right here, this costs about $300. And then they're currently releasing the newest version of the Plus, which has more internal memory and slightly better hardware. That one costs about $400 currently. So the question is, how do you spend your money the most effectively? Honestly, I think for most people, if you get the Mini for 200, that's gonna be the best bang for your buck. You're not gonna notice really any of the loss of features that you'd have on the Plus, which we talked about, there's really not much of a difference. So the Plus is gonna cost you $100 more. You're really not gonna get much in terms of your user experience being any better. Then we have the newest version of the Plus, which as we said, has more internal memory. So for those of you that are shooting on a high resolution full frame camera, that might not be a bad idea, although you will have to spend that extra $100. This leads me to another point I wanted to mention, and that is the fact that you can always just attach a flash drive to one of your USB ports. You can save all your images to that flash drive, you can plug that into your computer easily, 
And so that's an easy way to overcome the storage limits of the Mini or even the older Pro. To be clear, the ASAIR Plus that I have here and the Mini both have about a 32 gigabyte internal storage. Now the usable storage is quite a bit less because you have to have the OS on here and some other stuff. And what I've found is that I can normally shoot, you know, a couple nights in a row without running out of space whatsoever. Granted, my camera's pretty low resolution. If I was using a high resolution camera though, and I was taking dark frames and flats and all that, I would have to really make sure that I'm constantly pulling my images off either of these ASARs because otherwise the internal system memory would fill up pretty quickly. While we're on the topic of memory, I wanna grab a flash drive, plug it in, and show you how to actually save your images to the flash drive, or even copy them from your existing internal memory and copy them to the flash drive because I do get asked that fairly often. Well, this is annoying. I went through, I turned on the ASA or Mini, got everything ready to go, but when I try to connect to it on my phone, I get the same problem as before. It says it needs to download additional files and it gets stuck at 0%. I've already tried clearing the cache and the app data here on my phone, but nothing seems to work. But this brings us to a very valuable lesson. I didn't think to bring my iPad or my backup phone with me today because I figured everything would just work. So imagine if I had come all the way out here on a clear night, one of the few we actually get here in Washington. I had everything ready to go, but I didn't factor in that I might need my iPad or my other phone. Maybe I drove four hours to get to a dark sky. Now what do I do? I can't use my phone, I can't use the ASAR, I can't even take any photos. This is one of the things you have to consider when buying any ASAR, is that if you run into these connection problems, you might lose one of your only clear nights, and that's a very big gamble. Now to be clear, I've been using ASAR since 2018, I think, and I've never really had any game-breaking problems like this until now. So this is not like a common thing, but I have heard from students who have random problems crop up. These are things you wanna be aware of. I want to make a quick update here in the video because as I was driving home, I realized that the underlying problem must have been with the app on my phone because when I transferred my apps from my old phone to my new phone, something must have gotten screwed up. And in fact, after reinstalling the ASAR app on this new phone, that fixed the problem. And I thought it would be important to include that here in the video because these are the things you're gonna to have to troubleshoot when you're out there on location. And one of the things I noticed the other night is you know, you're gonna have a long day at work dealing with cooking and cleaning, whatever else you have to do during the day. And so when you get to 10 or 11 o'clock at night, you're gonna be pretty exhausted. And the last thing you wanna have to do is troubleshoot these problems because your brain's not gonna be working at 100%. Anyway, I just wanted to clarify that I did fix the problem. Now I can show you how to actually copy your images to the flash drive or save them to the flash drive to begin with, and we'll move on from there. But you're starting to see just how important it is to have this troubleshooting mindset when you're doing astrophotography. This is something that you'll need to be good at to become a successful astrophotographer. All right, let's get back on track. We're back here in the app. We've figured out our problem, thankfully. Now we'll click where it says EMMC in the upper right corner. You'll note that because I plugged in my flash drive, I can either choose the internal storage, which has about 30 gigs, or the USB drive right here. And whichever one you have selected, you can now view the contents of that drive and it will automatically save everything to that drive that you have selected. It's that easy. But let's say you have some photos on your internal memory that you want to copy to your flash drive. We'll click EMMC, then we'll go down to Image Management, click on Auto Run, and then you can find the folders that you actually want to copy over. In my case, we'll grab this data right here, which has some trees in it, but whatever. Basically, what you want to do is click on the check mark box in the upper right corner, you can now choose whatever folder you want to. In my case, IC444. Then I'll choose copy to USB drive right there. And it's gonna go through and copy everything fairly quickly in most cases. So you can either do this for the individual folders that you wanna copy, or if you wanna copy just everything, you can go back here to the auto run folder. You would click on that checkbox in the upper right, click on auto run, and then copy that. And that's the basics of copying your images from the internal storage to the flash drive. The only downside of having a flash drive attached to your ASIR for more space is that, of course, it's taking up one of the four USB slots, which might be a problem for some of you. This could be one reason to consider buying the latest version of the ASIR Plus, which has almost 250 gigabytes of storage. That way you don't have to worry about the flash drive taking up one of the spots if that's a concern for you. So before we go, I thought we'd take a recap of the different ASARs currently available and decide which one will work best for you depending on your needs and your budget. First up, we have the ASAR Plus, which retails for around $300. That's kind of the baseline. It's gonna do a great job for everybody. 
It's got those USB 3.0 ports. If you want to do planetary work, it should work fine. If you want to save $100 though, then get the ASA or Mini. We showed you that today. It does a fine job. I haven't noticed any problems with it compared to the more expensive Plus, and it gets the job done. And for those of you that are going to be shooting with a high resolution camera and you want the latest and greatest thing, then the newer model, which has 256 gigabytes of storage, might not be a bad idea, but that one does cost $400. Finally, if you're still using the ASA or Pro and you're tired of dealing with the Wi-Fi connection problems, as we talked about, you can either get that antenna attached for about $50. You can get a Wi-Fi booster, which as we saw today will work, but I'm not a big fan of it. Or you can just buy the ASA or Mini for 200 bucks. And in most cases, that's gonna do a great job. So I hope they cleared up any questions you might have regarding the new lineup of ASA Airs, because I know there's a lot to choose from. And we also saw a real world example of what might happen to you. Maybe your phone isn't communicating properly, or there's a weird bug in the app. These are all things you have to consider because that's just one of the realities of using an ASA Air is that there might be some software problems that cause you to miss out on an otherwise good night. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video.